No one gets to the camera. I don't know why, but I, I don't think we can lose against you Gordon at home. Go score some as well. No, no, no. <laughs> Only one club in Sweden. Second to them, guys. <laughs> the best support of culture in Europe. Awesome to be back in Friends Arena. Hi everyone, welcome to HFV. Welcome until back until HFV, should we say? <laughs> well, home. Away. Oh, oh, neutral again. That will do it. We've experienced many Swedish games on the channel together, including 12 out of 16 teams from the current Allsvenskan lineup. Derbies in Göteborg, Malmö, and of course in the capital, Stockholm. There are three teams in Stockholm with large supporter base, which means a total of six derbies every season, if they all stay in the league, of course. We've been to Djurgården Hammarby, Oiko Hammarby, Hammarby Oiko, Djurgården Oiko in 2022. I had to skip the first half of this year because of my thesis, unfortunately. But three weeks ago, we've been to Hammarby Oiko. Check all these videos on the Sweden playlist or the Arby Days playlist, link 1 and 2 in description respectively. There is one left, you guessed it, the biggest game of Nordic football, Aiko against Jurgården CF. On Aiko's home ground, Friends Arena. Round 24 of Allsvenskan, which means we have only 7 match days left from the league. Position 4 against position 13, a massive 15 points difference between these two eternal rivals. Who are also called twins because they were founded in the exact same year, 1891. Aiko, 15th of February, Jurgården 12th of March. But the supporters don't really like each other like twins. We can call this game Twilling Derby, which means the twin derby, but I'm quite sure the supporters won't be overly delighted with that. So let's just call it Stockholm's Derby. If you look at the last 10 head-to-head -head comparison, we see a total Aiko dominance, seven wins for them, one draw and two Jurgården victories. Jurgården are a team which the other two Stockholm sides used to mock with the term Derby Ghost, because there was a time when they weren't too successful in derbies. The perfect example, and really sorry to the away supporters for reminding them of this, in 2019 when Jurgården won the league, they had four defeats in 30 games. They won 20 games, drew 6 and lost all of the 4 Stockholm derbies. Now as you see they recovered in the last game where they won at home 1-0 against Oiko. And that was their first home win against Oiko since switching stadiums in 2013. Once again their first ever home win against Oiko in Teletvo Arena. There was chaos, match interruption which is also really likely to happen in this game because you know insane passion. Couldn't be there unfortunately but I was there at the derby before. Let's see a quick flashback about that one. <laughs> Oiko have a really poor season as I mentioned in recent videos. Logged them twice this year and they lost both of those games. Now they are out of the relegation zone but they are not safe yet at all. I've been to Friends Arena twice before and I must say I can't wait for this game. The tifos, the atmosphere, the passion. It's time to leave to Stockholm once again. We are in downtown Stockholm a day ahead of kickoff and we are gonna meet a Swedish YouTuber who is a content creator like myself but goes more into the analysis of the Swedish game and he is an Oiko supporter. I'm quite sure you know him. The first interview in this Oiko Jurgården vlog will be Gracie. Here we go. So first of all a warm welcome in uh, your own city actually and thank, thank you very much for <laughs> joining me for the interview. No problem. Let's start with your most memorable experience with Oiko. Oof. It's easy to say the the title we won 2018. Kalmar away. Kalmar away, yeah. But I will choose another another game from that uh, season. Hammarby at home. We won 1-0. Uh, missed the penalty. 
the first uh, 15 minutes in or something. Then in the second half they scored uh, a goal that was inside, off offside. And when that uh, goal went in, I thought like, yeah, now the title is gone. But then we scored with Heno Koitom, if you know what I mean. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah that he was a former coach, current assistant coach. Yes, and he played for for AK that year. Fifty thousand in the in the crown as well. It was a really really big game and a really bet, nice yeah. and important win that season. That was uh, the Sundsvall nil nil where he could have clinched the title, but eventually it went to Kalmar. Yeah, that was anticlimax. Hammarby uh, at home, 2018, one 0 so one is actually a typical AIK result. Yeah, back in the days. Right now it's more like yeah, three-one losses. Really good that season def uh, defensively. We uh, only concede 16 goals. So that's uh, off. I miss that. I miss that season so much. I bet. Yeah. I mean, you, you got into this season with title hopes, and it's yeah. pretty much going completely the other way around. Can you tell a bit about that? What's what has been going wrong? There was like sort of a mess also in uh, at the club as organization as well. The results, sucking yes. of Brandstrom, who you actually liked, if if I remember correctly. Yeah, I liked him. And then and then you have now Henning Bad, and but you still have the danger of relegation. Yeah. So tell a bit about that. Yeah, as you said, I liked uh, Brenström. I didn't. I don't think he was the problem. But we had uh, had a guy called uh, Manuel Lindberg. I think he is a big problem for for what's happened this season. Uh, the players we bought, uh, like uh, Victor Fischer. Oh yeah. Ooh, that, uh, that, that 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 was a scandal when he just disappeared and the coach was searching for him and he, he yes. could have been found in a, a he was festival found, found in, in Denmark. Uh, Denmark, exactly. Oh god. You know that signing is so one stories. of the. I didn't really, I didn't really think we we're gonna get into this, but yeah, the, these sort of things actually happened around Oiko this year. Yeah. So that is uh, not not the biggest problem. I think we we built our our team wrong when we got into the season so I don't know exactly the problem I think it's higher up than the coach or the, and the players sort of build up older players retiring like yeah, uh, Per Carson, exactly. Mikael Lustig uh, and uh, especially Sebastian Larsson and Sebastian Larsson yeah. our uh, captain last uh, last season so good player really was the difference in big games I think in derbies like today against you Gordon we really need uh, a player like him. But now we have Anton Saletros, also a leader on the, on the midfield. So, but it is so much that's happened. I, I don't know exactly the problem. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's such a pity that traditional clubs, especially Oiko and EF Göteborg, are struggling yeah. this year. And then you keep wondering that with such a large supporter base, how it can basically happen. And then yeah. other clubs who are who maybe don't have as many supporters are going well because they have just smart management. So our next question is, tell a bit about your content creator work, which is built around Oiko. You've been doing it yeah. since 20. 15, 16? I started my YouTube channel 2015 and I did the FIFA videos. Alright, classic start. Yes, uh, I did it for three years, then I quit. But 2017 I started to do uh, AIK vlogs. First vlog was against uh, Sirius when we won 4-1. Uh, uh, Ubasi, you know Ubasi, really good player for us that time. Then I just did AIK vlogs, all the matches. I, I don't think I've missed a single match since then. At home, or uh, like vlogging? Yeah, vlogging, exactly. And uh, at home I've missed like four, maybe. So I did uh, AIK vlogs only, AIK, uh, for three years. And 2020 I started... You can say Oiko, it's only okay. <laughs> mostly Swedish Oiko. viewers, so... Yes, 2020 I started to do react to all the... Also, not all them, but the big games. I think the first match I did uh, wasn't uh, Oiko, it was uh, Djurgården and Malmö. <laughs> and then since that day I've done big games and react to all match kind of matches in Alsace. And now you're basically the Oiko supporter YouTuber who covers all of Alsvenskan in yes. Swedish, reacts, predicts and sort of things. Yeah, I do a lot of things in Alsvenska. As you predicted this round as well and there you said a classic result, a classic Oiko home derby result which uh, uh, if I'm correct also happened last season right because now yeah, you lost Stefanelli. away yeah you got a 1-0 last year you won away 1-2 and then the first part of the season it was also 1-0 as you said exactly. Stefanelli yes. and now you uh, you predicted 1-0 as well because in your video you said Oiko basically can't lose a home derby <laughs> exactly. no, I'm too too confident this derby i don't know why but i, I don't think we can lose against you gordon at home it's I mean, the surface is, is definitely on your side yeah you know they won against us the first time on their home arena yeah, yeah yeah i started to follow aik Oiko when i was uh, 12 and since that time i just seen like three crosses against you gordon you know here i i can't see 
can see you gonna win. Do you still call them the Derby Ghost or not no, really after the no, last? That's gone, I'm afraid. I think we win 1-0 uh, and uh, Ottieno do a goal. Oh, a wing. <laughs> a wing back. Spark. A wing back, yeah. yeah. Always the player that you don't count scoring in these big games or derbies that doing it. So I think uh, Ottieno will have a run on the left side, curve it in. And uh, we win the match after that goal. Well, Neil. Sorry for, for the background noise, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Keep up the good work. And you too. See you at the Derby. Best of luck. We are in the Vasa Park and that's the away gathering area. I'm delighted with the interview yesterday with Gracie and now it's match day and I'm gonna cover some of the away march. It's gonna be insane. Here we are to capture some voices and here we are to take part at the march and just enjoy this day at its fullest. Let's go. Tell us your story, where you're from, whether it's your first time in Stockholm, what you think about today's game and so on. I'm from Spain. It's my first time here, as you said. Well, I'm, I'm excited about the Twillings Derby today. I hope a lot of Pyro, Tifo. We can be sure of that. Where have you been around Europe, ground hopping and so on? What was your best experience? You've also been, I think, to my local club, Ferenc Varos and so on. Like, I've been with my family in summer trips and when I go to a city, I love to visit the football stadium like there. So I've been to some countries like Germany, Hungary, Belgium. Welcome to Sweden and what you're going to experience today is it's going to be definitely something you're going to remember for long do you support anyone in Sweden or since it's your first time you're neutral? A little bit neutral but today win for Jurgården because my favorite club in Sweden also is IFK Göteborg. So uh, oh is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So why uh, Jurgården? Do you want to get Oiko relegated? Yeah, yeah I think so. That, that's an uncomfortable question because yeah people know that I like IFK Göteborg myself but uh, I'm really for like I want Oiko to stay up <laughs> because, yeah, because yeah. they have really great support. Bye -bye. What do you expect from today's game? You won the last one at home, which was the first victory at Tele That must have felt good as well. Uh, yes. 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 I love that game uh, and I think today's will be interesting. What do you think about the season so far? You guys are not bad, but you're also not up top. I think if we do well enough in the remaining games, we will climb the table and uh, considering everyone above us and the two teams below us are facing each other, anything can happen. Would you rather have Oiko down in Super Etan or uh, Jurgården in a Europa place? They can go down. Thank you so much for everyone the interview. Everyone else wants them down in the league. After a long time and actually the first time at Tel Atvo, you managed to win against Oiko. Were you guys there and if so, how was that for an experience? Yeah, we were there. It was, uh, it was amazing. Marcus uh, Danielsson, a uh, real player, yes. Yeah, very long time, as you said, we, until we, we won against them on Tele2. Amazing feeling. We, we was there on the, in the arena and uh, saw Djurgården win. It's an amazing feeling after so long uh, waiting time. And now we want to do it again at, at, their, uh, at their place. So. That's quite yeah. clear, yeah. So how do you see your chances in today's game? It's going to be tough as it's away as well. Yeah, it's going to be tough as always uh, in the Stockholm Derby. But uh, I think uh, Jugon will have the, upper, the hand. upper hand to win this uh, game and show uh, that Gnaget is nothing. We're going to win. Musa Hattrick. That's the team of Chassis. Does that mean Sweeney at Jurgården or you let Aiko yeah, score some as well? No, no, no. <laughs> We're not letting AK score. <laughs> They're shit. In the middle of the chance and the excellent atmosphere, I'm going to ask some more questions. Yes. How do you guys see today's game and who is your favorite player of Jurgona? Okay, so today's game is going to be a win for us, I believe. We're going to win 2-1 uh, and uh, our favorite player, who's our favorite player? Yeah, I believe it's our goalkeeper. Goalkeeper? Because he's going to save the net for us. <laughs> You're going to save the net. Oh!
second round, guys. Exactly what one expects. So uh, we like Sätterström. Sätterström, our goalkeeper. And also Lucas Bergvall. Ulle Larsson. Ulle Larsson. Lucas nice. Bergvall, a youngster from us. He's going to be a really good potential. And he's going to go to uh, La Liga Premier League soon, I believe. You're actually not the first one who's saying it on one of the videos that he's going to go to the Premier League. Yeah, I believe so. He has so good potential. It's on. You do what you want. Yeah, here. <laughs> 20, 20 kill. Oh my God. This is what you guys say is the, the typical Swedish football drink? This yeah. is what we drink when we go to football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> say say f no again on the camera. Uh, I can't do that, man, because I, I try to be on the channel which everyone respects, so I, I can't do that. Do you guys want Oiko to get relegated? Yes. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. You go to Europe or uh, or Gnaget or Karut? What do you say? No, you don't do it. No, you do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of, course, of course. Tell our viewers, guys, what Jurgoda means to you. Jurgoda means uh, like my life to me. Uh, it's uh, my favorite team and I've supported them for my whole life. Without you, Gordon, I don't know what I would support <laughs> or do. Yeah, probably the same. I've followed them many, many years. They're my life. I go to almost every match. I like the supporters. Uh, I like how they're playing. Uh, I love the culture. I love everything about Jurgoda. Do you guys have friends who support rivals, Hammarby or AIK, or are all of your friends Jurgoda? Uh, I have friends that support uh, Hammarby and AIK. I still accept them for who they are. <laughs> it's okay to be a bit different. But you Gordon is still the best. Yeah, the same. Uh, I, I go uh, to a school where almost 90% uh, of them are uh, AIK supporters. Oh, tough for you So, then. Um, if we win today, I will be the king of the school. I have many friends who support other teams. I accept them for who they are, but uh, not the team they support. <laughs> This one looks really, really spectacular. I have a pretty great spot next to the church to film. It's not exactly the, the nicest thing. This chant was against Oiko. The one who doesn't jump is a, is a Oiko supporter swine. That's the translation. And now they divide the, divide the sides. Look at this. This is what you can't miss around the Swedish Derby match they experience.
mentioned it many times guys, uh, but I'm gonna do it once again. This is not the best supporter culture in Europe. There's a special train. Arena like this the train is almost falling apart all the way we leave Mental you get addicted during the game like this experience like a whole match day like this in Sweden. This bridge was an area where uh, we had to go separate ways of the Eurogonian supporters. We are going to be in the home section today. They are marching on the other side, as you see on screen. So time to capture some oil content this time. Here we go to the home sections of Friends Arena. The show. Look who's there. Hey man, how are you? It's Give me a score prediction for today, guys. 2-1 oil. I'll say 1-1. Who will score the goals? Otieno Milosevic. Otieno. You are still on the verge of sort of the relegation playoff place. Are you going to manage to stay in Alsvenskan? I know there is only one answer for you, but still, I'll ask. After this game, uh, we could really use to win in the derby to get you know, the feelings of the, and the confidence. And Psychology of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think this game is really important, you know, get that uh, emotions to and the confidence to go through. Same, I think the momentum is key, but uh, you know, it's on the verge. But I think there's so many teams in, in the like league that's falling right now. So yeah, I think we're good. I think Jurgården will win 2-1. Uh, 3-0. Three nil. To Jurgården? Yes. 1-0 Jurgården. That's a humble one, yeah? I said, uh, I said 2 1 to you go down. Yeah, 2 1. I believe 2 1. Two two, one. No, 2 0, you go down. 2 0, you go down. Come on, you go! Go down! I think uh, 1 0 to you go down. Uh, Musa Gurbanli in the 68th minute. I'm gonna say 1 0, goal by uh, Bakkan. I have two options. Uh, either AIK uh, win uh, 1 0 uh, and they score in the 45th minute and park the bus, or um, we win uh, 2 0. And uh, I think uh, Musa and uh, maybe Mange. Yes, Mange. I think uh, you know Aiko is uh, very normal to a 1-0 uh, win, uh, and I think uh, Pitas will score. 2-1 AIK. I think uh, Pitas won, and I think Salitras won. Biggest in Alsvenskan, 50,000 capacity natural surface, which uh, is a really big thing. Regularly home to concerts, though, so that makes the surface uh, a bit ruined. The national stadium at the same time. Friend. 
Friends Arena. Friends are an organization against bullying. It is actually Swedbank who pay for the naming rights of the stadium and they give those rights to uh, Friends. So it's really for the good cause. I mentioned before last year when I was here for uh, either against Mjelby or against Hammarby. It's really nice to see these sort of things and, and uh, people standing up for it, financing the good cause. This is the naming story of Friends Arena. You're a YouTuber, yes? And as always, it's awesome to be back in Friends Arena.
seem to count and of the 15th minute because it was apparently offside the referee was pretty clear about it dominant Oiko in the first half they had five shots but only one went on target they literally from five to ten meters inside the box they had huge chances and they literally shot like 15 meters over the bar accuracy is not on top but they had more corners Jurgen are leading in uh, free kicks actually Jurgen came away a few times but they could never finish their chances in the second half let's hope it's gonna be a bit more interesting because uh, well Jurgen have to push for uh, for Europe we have to push against relegation, so uh, let's hope we can avoid a nil nil this time. Both teams will attack the goal behind which their ultras are, so that might give some extra energy. It wasn't a bad first half, but it wasn't that enjoyable either. Let's hope for a better second one. Before we carry on with the vlog, a short service message. You probably guessed that creating all this content abroad takes up quite much time and money. It wouldn't even be possible without generous supporters offering me a place to stay every now and then. If you have the possibility, please support my work by hitting the thanks button below the video. You can patronize the creation of future HFV videos by that with an amount you choose yourself. Another possibility for this is the channel's Patreon page which you can see on screen and find in the description as well. If you have no intention of sending money to the channel, it's already a huge help. If you like this video, 
share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. I know there are many teenager football supporters watching this channel. In case you're one of them, ignore what I just said about sending cash. Spend it rather on yourself, your friends or buy a new scarf of your favorite team. At your age, I was told to do the same. Thank you very much for your help in advance. Let's carry on with the game.
that they are burning, but it must be like you're gonna support their t-shirts maybe. But they are burning <laughs> at uh, the front of Nora store, the home ultras. He will 
be an immortal hero of Aiko in the Stockholm Cyber with Istanbul today. season I must say these supporters standing behind their team averaging even more than last year they totally deserve this memorable experience time a total of six minutes whether uh, we make it without any banger being thrown on the pitch that's the actual question will go on for a very very long time. There will be quite many empty beer glasses for I bought today. As always banter inside and outside the stadium. Ooh, 
Wow, where should I start? This experience was something that's hard to put into words. It's very, very emotional for me as well. So many of you greeted me to show your appreciation. So delighted you enjoyed the content, guys. Tried to make the absolute most of this one. I hope it could be seen. Oiko are five points away from direct relegation now, which gives them a bit of a breathing room. Yurgodan are seven points away from a European qualification spot. They have seven rounds left to work on that, or they'll have to win the cup next year if they want to be in Europe. Delighted with the visual displays of both clubs. I must say the time, the effort gone into that and the money as well. It's insane. The rats and the monkeys, right? Oiko call themselves rats, Yurgodan monkeys. So there you go with the meaning of the Yurgodan Tifo. Oiko supporters came up with the idea of recoloring a famous picture taken in the 1960s during a derby in their old and sentimental stadium, Rosunda. I tried to balance this video knowing that I'll be closer to the Oiko supporter section inside the stadium, going to the away march to cover both sides. I know that if you're a Yurgodara, you must be very disappointed with the result right now, but I hope this video could still give you something to enjoy. For every single interview, I want to say a huge thanks you guys made this documentary complete. Warm greetings to each and every household. This was so much fun, so, so much fun. And as a neutral, really funny as well. If you're watching this from abroad, you probably didn't understand the majority of the chants. I understood 60-70% of it, constant banter and insults. It is what a proper derby day looks like and understanding some of the chants made it hilarious. You gotta adore Swedish humor. The first goal wasn't offside, that was a wrong call in the first half. You don't have VAR in Sweden, which is something I stand behind to preserve the culture. But then you have this aspect that you have to put up with decisions like this. Tack så mycket, Kung Gracie, for the collab. His derby video is out, link 5 in the description box below. I read some comments under his video that you guys want more collaborations. There is a good chance they will happen in the future. Especially when my Swedish will be good enough for it. It was bucket list for me to get this guy and his thoughts on screen, so delighted with it. This is my longest video as for now. As you see, I really go quality over quantity this year. Only thing I'm annoyed with is the terrible sound quality when there's wind. I'll have to find a solution for that, but I guess it's still way better than before the new gear. I'm so thankful I accidentally discovered the Swedish supporter culture two years ago. You guys over here deserve to have the best possible match day content. The ones watching from abroad deserve to know how incredible it is over here to come and experience it themselves one day. This was so complete one of the peaks in these two years of the channel. What a party these Yurgodan supporters made before the game. Quite some experience to enjoy, just like the atmosphere Oiko supporters created inside the stadium. I have to give a title to Oiko after this game. They are the number one beer shower team in Sweden. It happened in the Hammarby game last year and now after the first goal as well. It's that spectacle you don't mind seeing even if getting one in your face. Insanely long video, long summary as well. This was the Oiko Yurgodan match day documentary. If you liked it, join me on the channel's social media. You can see all the options on screen. Check out the Sweden playlist under link 1 and Gracie's channel under link 3 in the description box below. I was HFV, we carry on soon. We see us next time.